Hey guys, it's May May, and this week on May May Made It, we are going to talk trends. And what I have done is kind of looked through some things I think are really popular in um, not just card making, but a lot of card making, a lot of design, and um, even home decor stuff. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of spend a week looking at trends that are going on right now, because um, with the seasons changing, might be a good way to get you started in your crafting for next season. Okay. What I wanted to talk about today was color, and it's very interesting to me, some things I've seen on Pinterest, and I'm, I'm hoping you guys know what I'm talking about, and if not, I've created a Pinterest board on my channel for you to follow, or not on my channel, but on my Pinterest um, for you guys to follow, and um, I will put a link to it below. I know last time I didn't, and I got the cutest comment, you can run, but you can't hide. That was so cute to me. Um, but anyway, I will put a link, and that board is called Hues to Use, so it's H-U-E-S to Use, and here's what I thought. I see these pictures all the time, like, let's start with an easy one, <laughs> like this. I see these pictures on Pinterest where they'll have a photo, and then they'll have the colors put out to the side of it that give you the breakdown of what is included to make this design. Now, obviously, this is not my design, and I got it straight off of Pinterest, and this is someone called PCB Color Crush, and I just printed this to show you. But what they do for you, which I think is super cool, is they give you this pattern, and they just basically dissect it into colors. So you can see, if you wanted to use something like this or make something like like this your colors are laid out for you here and I want to show you what I did if I were being inspired by this color and this pattern I would be able to use these to pull the colors out so let me show you I just sort of looked at this and decided I'm gonna get one of each of these colors and the first color there is this gray color so I pulled out a gray from my stash and I know that would work with something like this and the next color is kind of this pinky red color and mine is not exact but it's pretty close to that it may not show up on camera well because this is a, it's showing up pretty hot orange here but it's not it's really close to this pink then my next color is kind of this redder deeper color at the bottom again on camera i hope it's showing up as well as it is as it is in person but that's that color and then i also pulled this orange which is here now i know if i want to use these colors on a project they're all going to work together because i can see them being used here so I don't even have to worry. I know these colors will work. So if you have problems finding colors for different projects you're doing, if you're doing scrapbooking or um, mixed media, that's a big one for me is mixed media. A lot of times you want to sit down and just play with your colors and sometimes you just don't know where to go. I think these are great ways to do that. Another thing I want to show you is this. I don't have an argyle print. I do have an argyle embossing folder, so that would be a cool way to even include argyle with these colors that I'm doing. But let's say you have a print that has colors that will coordinate. The colors in this six by six piece of paper are gray and red and yellow and pink and orange, and a lot of those colors are found here, and it kind of just works. So if you're sitting down and you're like, you know, I just really want to step out of my box and try colors that I don't normally try, but it's hard for me to put them together, check out these. I don't really know. I guess they're color inspiration or color charts. I'll tell you this. If you go to my Pinterest board that is Hughes to Use, you will see that at the bottom of that, there'll be other ones that Pinterest will link up for you where people are doing this too. And there is so much color inspiration for you there. And I will tell you that one of the trends I'm seeing this year is color, color, color. A lot of things are more color than they are even sentiment or they are design. Um, some people are using color simply to be the actual card itself with one, sen one simple sentiment. Like um, I recently saw... Vicky, I always want to say Pompano. I don't know if I say her last name correct, but she took a simple piece of white paper. Um, she ran it through her die cutting machine with um, strips or stripes of stars. And then she put rainbow colored paper behind the holes and that was it. Stars, rainbow colored paper, and that was the focal point. So color is huge. Now I want to look at another picture that's not quite this easy. This one was pretty simple to get those colors out of. So let's look at another one. Look at this guy. Now, I went with this one because zebras are my thing. I love zebra print. I love zebra patterns. I'm going to hold it up for a second so you can see it a little closer. Notice, first off, I want to do this. See this picture? When I look at this picture, I see black and white. And that is sometimes what we do. We just see the forefront of the picture, and we don't always see what's deep inside of it. But I'm going to move my hand and show you these colors again. 
look what was found in this photo. And I can totally see it when you point them out to me. <laughs> Here's some lilac or some purple in this area. This stone color is in this area. This dark obviously is in his stripes. There's a charcoal. If you look close here, you can see some charcoal. There's another deeper stone color running right through here and even up in this area. And then, of course, the whole picture is black and white and grays and purples and you see it when you dissect the picture that's where this comes in handy let me show you what i found to go with this color this colorway i have some solid cardstock and this is from michael's this is some recollection that i picked up and it really does mimic this lilac pretty good but it's not perfect but it's pretty close so there's a purple obviously a black because that color is in there so i'm gonna add a black to that mix I have this kind of stony gray color that I found that I really didn't even realize I had. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't have even pulled this color out because I don't gravitate to grays and things like that. But when I look at it like this, in this colorway, I think, no, I love this black and gray and purple together, but I probably wouldn't have put it together. And at the moment, I know this is going to be shocking. I don't have any zebra paper right now. I don't know why. We just did a card party and I used a lot of zebra for that. And so I don't have any zebra right now. However, I found this print, which is a black and white chevron. It might not show up well on camera. I'll hold it up for you to see. But this black and white chevron gives me that same feel. So you can see how I've just kind of taken this this is a guide and turned it into paper I can use in a scrapbook layout or a card or whatever. And I didn't even have to think. I just went, you know what? I'm going to try this today. Now, I don't have any charcoal paper. I dug everywhere and had nothing charcoal. But I do have this. This is London Fog Ink from um, Memento. And let me show you what I did. I took this gray paper and I did a sample here with the ink. And look how charcoal that is. So I thought, there's how I can pull my charcoal in is by doing my sentiment in this gray or even doing some pattern stamping on the gray in this color, and I'm going to get my charcoal in there. So, I know this seems kind of weird, but when you're discussing color, a lot of times, some of us, including myself, are crippled in the color front. I know there have been times where I've been like, I am bored to death with my red, black, and white, or my, you know, white scheme, or just going on a color, what I see from paper. And, you know, just using what's in the paper pack. And I just want to step out and do something different. What a great way to do it. Now, as I said, I did create that Pinterest board with a bunch of these types of things on it for you to be able to get some inspiration. But I also know that there are thousands of them out there for you to get more and more inspiration. So check that out. I want to show you one more thing you can do. Now, everybody knows how simple it is with color to be inspired by a paper pad so simple if you're not familiar with this let me tell you how this works when a manufacturer makes these paper pads as a whole they make them to where every page can be used with each other and i appreciate that because it makes my job so much easier if i want to make a card and i find a page i love i know most of the pages in here are going to work with that um but what i thought i'd do is kind of pull some out and see what else i can do in my stash so that i can make these paper pads usable with more and more of the products I have in my stash. So check this out. I chose this piece of paper. I'm going to zoom in. Now I've zoomed in a good bit here because I chose this piece of paper from the stash and I think it is so cute. It has all of these kites on the corner and then some over here and a little sentiment and I just think it is precious paper. It's not something I would normally gravitate to because I don't really do a lot of the pastels and things. So I thought, let's play with this to make my eye see something different. Now, if you look in this corner, you have lots of inspiration for color, and that's pretty much where I went. Let me show you what I pulled out. Now, from that same paper pad, the 6x6, six six, I found this pattern piece, and it matches this kite perfectly. It's just a little larger print, and I thought, it's a perfect thing to do to me is to take this page and pull a print into it that I know will work. And look, if I decided I wanted to mat this page, that print works perfectly right so now let's look at solids you might not think that this color is the right blue but when you look at your design here this map on this kite is exactly that blue it makes it perfect it makes it work so there's a pale blue this is a mustardy yellow and i want to tell you where this comes in this little flag or this little tie for this kite is very mustardy as well as this yellow tends to be a little more mustardy than bright yellow 
And in the map, and it may not show up on the screen very well, but in the map of this kite, there is some yellow and some mustards. So you can add this, not to mention that it kind of goes with this kite almost exactly. So there's a kind of mustardy, orangey yellow color. Now, simple enough, you can see cream. I'm just going to put this cream behind it. But you can see this cream color pretty easy. The cream is in the back of this little sentiment here. The cream is running through this sentiment here. So cream is easy. This stripe here can be cream or white. Let me show you what white does with it. I'm going to add the white to the stash here and let you see. This white paper also works. Because the cream is not so heavy that it can only be the cream background, you can also add the white. And as I looked even deeper, I noticed there was a good bit of black in the picture. Now, you might not think there is, but when you start to look at the photo and break it down, this butterfly is black, these musical notes are black, the sentiments are black, this one's a little grayer, but they're mostly black, so I think you could even add that to it. I found a gray that works perfect with it. I'll put the gray to the back. But this gray worked really well because this photo frame here that's on the bottom of the page is gray. See that? So look at all the colors I have found to go with this one piece of paper. So I'm not stuck with just using the blue and the white and the gray. I actually can pull out this brighter color and this pattern. I can mix all of these things together and it's super cool to do that. Now I have one more piece and this one's going to take you really, really looking, okay? But it works and let me show you. This one is red. And I know that it seems kind of odd, and it's actually redder than it's showing on camera, but if you look right down here at this dash line for this kite, it is exactly this color, and that is a perfect way to pull those colors out, and it works. It's just a good idea to not use just your paper pads with each other, because you know... I'm going to see if you're like me. Sometimes I'll buy a paper pad and I'll use all my favorite pieces and I'm kind of left with some that I don't feel work as well as others. This way I can pull those out and turn them into basically my own paper pad. Now check this out. When we look at all the pages this one piece inspired, we ended up with our pattern, our red, our black, our mustard, our pale blue, our cream, our white and our gray. We basically created a paper pack for this one piece of paper. Just a way to inspire you. Color is huge right now. Some things are just being created because of their colors. People are like playing with oranges and yellows and pinks and you know they say the new color this year is orchid and so we're going to be seeing a lot of that apparently. So keep an eye out on these color things. When you get into a rut, try something out. Go grab one of these pictures off of Pinterest something like this that just says, hey, here's all you need to make a cool project. I hope this helps you with your color idea. I know we just, sometimes you can just get stuck in a color rut. Um, and not only that, my mother, for example, she's not comfortable with color. I don't know what it is about color that freaks her out, but like painting her house. She wants color in her house so bad, but she doesn't know where to start. If you're looking to paint some room in your house and you want a beautiful color scheme you know will work together, instead of picking up one of those paper, um, one of those paint samples that go from the darker color to the lighter color of the same color, look at these that tell you if you choose these colors, you know it's going to be pleasing to the eye because look at that gorgeous picture, right? Okay, I hope that helps you with using those pictures. I bet you see a lot of people pinning them lately, and I just think they're genius. Go check them out. In the comments below, I challenge you to tell me what your favorite color combination is or the way you find inspiration for color. I think it will really help us if we work together to do that so we can be on trend with our crafting. Let me know what you think about on trend this week. We're going to work on that. Tomorrow, I'll be talking to you about being on trend with your card making, and um, I'm going to try to give you five videos this week. Reason being, the weather shut me out last week, and I had a horrible time with videos, so I'm going to try to really give you guys some extra this week, and I really enjoyed talking to you about color, and I would love to help you with any questions you might have. All right, guys, let's get started and be on trend in our color. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.